Good evening. I hope everyone had a good afternoon and uh, glad to see you back tonight. Uh, just a few uh, quick announcements. Uh, the seniors will be there uh, having their monthly meeting, eating breakfast uh, at Western Sids um, this coming Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. And if you need a ride, you need to be at church by 8.45. And, uh, and also, uh, don't forget about the men's conference uh, uh, in June. You've not signed up yet. You uh, sign up sheet still up on the front, so uh, feel free to do that. Uh, does anyone else have any announcements or anything tonight? Hmm. Uh, just continue to remember those on the prayer list, uh, those that was added this morning, and also those that uh, are have already been on the prayer list, and those that have. Uh, lost loved ones um, through the weeks and the months past. Uh, just continue to remember them. Remember those traveling. I know Brother Fred's traveling tonight, and uh, we'll get him next week. Uh, but uh, have a little fun with him Wednesday night. But anyway, uh, but uh, does anybody else have any prayer requests or anything? Well, if not, we'll uh, take up evening tithes and offerings and uh, ask the gentleman to come around.
would. Somebody said this morning, I know a lot of flu going around. Don't shake hands. Let's just fist bump if you don't want to shake hands. Everybody, if you would, just fellowship for just a moment. Welcome back tonight. Glad to see everybody here. As I said earlier, hope you've had a good afternoon. Uh, before I get started tonight, I give you the opportunity to testify if my, the Lord might have laid something on your heart. That's right. Amen. That's good. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Anyone <laughs> else? Yeah, 
in the end. Yep. That's right. We're not. He's all in all. Someone else? If not tonight, you have to be turning to uh, Acts chapter 20. going to be in uh, Acts 20, uh, verse 22 through 24, I believe it is. Give me a moment to turn another page or two. Um, all right. You follow along with me, I'll read, and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer tonight. In uh, Acts 20, verse 22 says, And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unt unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Let's pray. Our dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for everything you've already done tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the songs, and we thank you, Lord, for the special singing. We just pray most of all, Lord, and just thank you that the Holy Spirit and you have moved already, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for uh, the blessings that you've already given us today. We ask, Lord, tonight that you just bless your word. Uh, use me for a little while, Lord, that uh, we just see some things in the scriptures and that we just take them to heart. Help us to be more like you each and every day. And I just give you praise and glory. Just thank you for everything, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. Uh, tonight I want to preach to you for just a little while. I, I, I was looking this afternoon. I, I really, um, uh, these three verses, and I want to talk about them some. I, I, we, we talk a lot about uh, Paul right now in Romans on Wednesday night. And Paul here is uh, uh, basically... Uh, uh, knows that he's going to go back to Jerusalem. He has a desire to go back to Jerusalem. Eventually, he has a desire to get to Rome. I think sometimes he may have planned on taking a ship and going visit and uh, see some of the sites. He didn't really understand uh, exactly how he was going to get there. He wound up getting there, but as uh, the verse says here in verse 23, I think the Holy Spirit eventually led him to understand because of the... Uh, uh, testimonies or the revelations that uh, other men had given him that he was going there in chains and, and uh, uh, he, he was going to be held there. But uh, uh, I, I want to just preach to you just a little while tonight though uh, that uh, uh, basically in, in a moment in verse 24, but I, I really want to talk just a little bit about the Holy Spirit a little bit. Sometimes I, and I, I watch myself with this and I hope that people don't misunderstand me sometimes we talk about this sometimes on Wednesday night. Uh, I referred to, uh, we was talking at uh, work this Friday before I left. You know, I was talking about that. We, you know, and I even said to them, I, uh, this day and time, the Holy Spirit uh, does not have the freedom that it used to have. It's still the same Holy Spirit. Now, I don't want to sit here and tell you tonight that the Holy Spirit is the all in all because I know my scripture enough to know that the Holy Spirit if the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to edify one thing. You'll see the Holy Spirit move, but the very thing he's going to do is what you and I should do. He points to Calvary's cross and the Lord Jesus Christ. He, that's what the Holy Spirit does. Now, it manifests itself in different ways, but it's, its direction is, and the same thing it does, it's sort of like in the background of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's what you and I are, but the, the Holy Spirit makes us bold. Uh, you know, you can get in a crowd, and you know those people are lost. And it, most of the time, a lot of times, it might be your own family, uh, someone that you're dealing with. And that's probably the hardest time to speak or actually testify or, or you know, give your, uh, uh, maybe your, your feelings of how you got saved and everything. But the Holy Spirit will make a person bold. 
and, uh, and, and uh, the Holy Spirit here witnessed in every city. And, and uh, you can look over in chapter 21 and others, there's, there's places there where someone just comes up, grabs a man's girdle and says, whoever this belongs to is going to be carried and given, you know, and put in chains and that type thing. And it belonged to Apostle Paul. So we know that. Uh, but the Holy Spirit, I say that tonight because of the Holy Spirit, that is, I, I say that a lot of times, the Holy Spirit moves in a service. The Holy Spirit is a directional flow of the Spirit. Uh, uh, I know that's the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I understand that. But he, he flows. And I think, I think one good thing about Mount Carmel, and you guys have always been here, I'll put it that way. Uh, and when I come here, and, and us that uh, have been at different churches, and sometimes you may visit somewhere, the Holy Spirit doesn't move like it does here as it does some other places. So that is a compliment to you. Can it move more? Absolutely. It can move more uh, if we'll allow it to move. Uh, and, and, uh, and the Lord's got his own way of doing things, uh, and, and I understand that. And, but uh, the Holy Spirit is vital. But uh, I say all that because the Apostle Paul, uh, he, he says here, uh, that, that he's talking about the Holy Spirit, you know, witness in every city, saying that uh, uh, chains and afflictions await me. But I, I want you to see really tonight what in verse 24, and I, I think this is, says a lot about the Apostle Paul. It, it needs to say a lot about us. It says, but none of these things move me. And I want to preach to you tonight just for a little while. What does move you? What moves you? Now, tonight... Stan sung some. There was a couple of songs in the, in the choir. There's different things that move us. Uh, you know, when, when the Spirit, like in, in the case of the special singing tonight, uh, he felt it was on his heart and everything. There was something in that. And that was the Holy Spirit. And that, that was a little movement of the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and we, we had it in the choir singing. Sometimes we're moved by different things. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ was moved with compassion. When he's seen uh, 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 Lazarus and, uh, 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 and Jerusalem and, and different things move us. We, we get them moved emotionally. If you don't think so, then uh, you will eventually wind up at a funeral home. And, and it will move you when you go there because they'll have your loved ones there. And you, it'll move you emotionally. It, 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 but uh, what really moves us? It, it, what, what, what makes us... What makes us who we are. What makes us tick, as the old word goes? What makes us go? And, and I, I think that uh, uh, we can find that back in uh, uh, chapter 17 tonight. And I think it's verse uh, uh, 28. It says, For in him we live and move and have our being. That's what moves us. Uh, that's what gives us the freedom. You say, well, you know, Scripture talks about this. You know, it says, don't say that you're going to do something tomorrow. It, uh, say that if the Lord's will, you're going to do something tomorrow. Because you have plenty. Because I may not wake up in the morning. You may not wake up in the morning. But the, the things that move us, what, you know, Paul was talking about things that didn't move him. He wasn't worried about going to Jerusalem. He wasn't, he, he wasn't worried about the chains. He wasn't worried because over in, uh, I can't remember if it's Ephesians or part of the Acts or Corinthians, but basically he says, I'm ready to go to Jerusalem and even so to die for Christ Jesus. Uh, that's a different kind of movement. Uh, uh, that, that's a willing movement. That's a, that's a sold out movement. Uh, that, uh, he knew who his Savior was. And I hope, uh, what you know, the old saying goes, I, guess, I think it was, I can't remember if it was Moody that said that or C.H. Spurgeon. But, you know, we don't know how we'll act until that day that we are presented it before us. Meaning, you don't know that situation until you get in it. Uh, you don't know if you really got what they say we've got uh, uh, until it's faced with us. Uh, and, and you don't know if somebody comes in the front door tonight, has a gun and everything. Uh, you don't know if this is your last day or not. Would you still stand for Christ? We don't know. I hope that we do. We understand that. And I hope that I've lived long enough that I trust the Lord enough to, to in that situation. But for one thing, the movement that, that happens in our souls is something that we need to express. 
And that, that, that is expressed, in my case, a lot of times you guys may see, I cry. Hey, I, you know, some people I've been in church, they'll wave a hand. Uh, some people will let out a whoop <laughs> and a nice little, uh, there's different ways. But the point of it is, if it's, the, if it's what's moving you is the real thing, the Holy Spirit moving us and the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think that's what Paul is trying to get across. He, he wanted us to understand that those things, he, you know, none of those things bothered him. None of those things moved him. Neither count my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy. What was his course? What was his desire to do? It was what he was called to do of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that for any of his case, it was for preaching and sharing the gospel. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus and testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now he, he says in another verse that he did not receive this of men or by men, but he uh, received it by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And that's how you got salvation. I, it's like I said this morning, we can talk about salvation, we can point, we're not any different than the Holy Spirit really, uh, we're just in the physical realm of it that he does the same thing. Uh, you know, uh, he, when he moves and when we move uh, in our life, uh, whether you've got the power and you do something at work and everybody just looks at it and says, what a wonderful job, uh, how wonderful you do don't take the credit, don't take the credit. Just say, by the grace of God, uh, he, he allowed me to do this, and we figured it out. Thank the Lord. And so we should always just point to Calvary and point to the Lord. And that's the thing I think that Paul did. He, he was uh, uh, desired that, that the, the things that he would do, he never wanted to bring reproach on, on the Lord. He didn't want to bring anything upon that. We talked about that some on Wednesday nights. Uh, the, the fact of it is, is the things that move us. What moves us? Why do you come to church? Why do you serve the Lord? What, what is it inside of you that, that makes you get up and come? What, what is it? Is it uh, that uh, mama may get on to me? Daddy might give me a whipping this afternoon if I don't come. Uh, uh, but it, do we come, as like Stan said, and we talked about this morning, do you come to church because hmm, God loves you and you love the Lord? That's, a, that's awesome. Do you know that? That is awesome. That for one thing, that God loves me, a sinner, a sinner. And it's like Stan sung tonight. He knew me and when, I was, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. And yet he still loved me. Uh, that is amazing that God would love someone like me. Uh, but what is in, in tune to that, uh, or in turn with that, is the fact that we have an opportunity to love the Lord ourselves and, and, and to thank Him every Sunday for what He's done. And, and the movement that, that we have in our, in our hearts and our souls, I hope that it's love. It's love for, uh, 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 for the Lord. It's love for our brothers and sisters. Uh, it's just love. And that's what God is. And God is love. And that, I think that's what moves him. He wanted to, he wanted that, uh, to understand that movement. He wanted to understand uh, 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 the things that, that drove him, that, that made him go to, uh, uh, I was reading this afternoon, we're not going to preach, of course, tonight, but uh, 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 the, I was reading a story where the Lord said, I, he went a little further. How about us? Can we go just a little further, uh, farther down the line? Can we just go, you know, he, he went to Gethsemane and they said he went down and he just fell down under the load and prayed. Done it three times. But he went a little further. He went up to Golgotha's hill. Went a little further. Went and got put on a cross. Went a little further. Went a little further and got put in a borrowed tomb. Went a little further, got raised from the dead. Amen. Went a little further, now he sits at the right hand of the Father. And then sometimes he asks us just to go a little further. What moves you? What moves you? Why do you love the Lord? It's just a question that you can answer and nobody else. 
I love the Lord because he died on Calvary for me. I have eternal life. But I love him because if that's all, that's enough, Jeff. But I love him because he still loves me and he still blesses me every day. He'll bless me in the morning if I wake up. I've gotten to the age now, Robert, that when I wake up in the morning, I just tell the Lord, thank you, Lord, for today. And I go to bed at night, I say, thank you, Lord, that you see me through the day. If I don't wake up in the morning, I'll see you as soon as you get here. Huh? That's wonderful. The Lord loves me, and the Lord loves you. Let him move you. And he's going to put you in some situations. You're going to be uncomfortable. It's not natural to stand in front of people and say, especially this day and time, and talk about the Savior. They don't want to hear it. But be like Jeremiah. He told Jeremiah, he said, they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to hear you. They're going to complain about it. But tell them anyway. Why? You're doing it if you do it out of love. So we've got to move beyond love that I have for me and my house, me and the church, me and you. And we've got to get to the place where we love those that don't are not loved. Uh, they're loved by God, but they don't understand it. We call them unsaved. Uh, we've got to love them in. And, the, and, the, and to share that love that we have in our hearts to them, those folks we come in contact with. Because if they ever get to the place where they experience it, and the only way to do that is on their knees, crying out to the Lord, they will say, that's the greatest thing I ever got in my life. Why didn't you tell me about it sooner? That's what a lot of them say. And I, I just want us to be willing and uh, let the Lord move us. And, and tonight, uh, uh, the things that didn't move Paul, uh, you know, we don't need to be moved by that. Uh, the cares of the world. But the guidance of the Holy Spirit, his still small voice of the Lord still whispers to me and talks to me when I read his word or when I talk to him. That's word more how wonderful it is to be reading God's word and him speak to you and that those things that were always there jump off the pages and right at you and you say, Lord, thank you. Uh, uh, maybe, you know, a dull guy like me, finally every once in a while a light bulb will go off. <laughs> and I'm thankful for that. Uh, but I, I just wanted to share this with you tonight that that the things that move me, he said none of these things move me, but we have our movement in the Lord Jesus Christ. He allows us to do that. He guides us. You know, we're, we're not children of darkness anymore. We're children of light. Uh, we're, we're God's children. We're, we're, Jesus Christ is my, uh, if you want to picture it this way, uh, he's my savior, I understand that, but he's my big brother. Uh, he's going to lead us and guide us where we need to go. Uh, so we need just to need to trust him and allow him to uh, uh, direct our steps and to move us where we need to go. Uh, because we have that movement in him. We have our life in him. Without him, uh, th then we would uh, see death. Uh, you know, I've said this, and I, you guys already know this uh, probably, but, uh, you know, I love that verse in that song uh, where he says, uh, in the valley of the shadow of death. And one time, I, you know, years ago, that song was being sung, and I had one of those light bulb moments. And, and it said, you know, uh, you cannot have a shadow without light. Remember that. You cannot have a shadow without light. And that light is the Lord Jesus Christ. And since I know him, he's going to guide me over this river. He's going to take care of me. Uh, uh, tonight. So uh, I just wanted to uh, share this with you tonight. I, uh, that's pretty much what I had. So uh, uh, I hope that uh, allow the Lord to move you. Just allow him to move you. Uh, uh, and just be willing. I'll just put it that way. Just be willing to allow the Lord to, to work on you and do those things. And uh, uh, see where it goes. Just see where it goes. Trust him. Uh, uh, all right. I took a break for it, so I'm good. Uh, if anybody else uh, 
have a, a word or anything? I love you and appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much for loving me. And Sam, uh, I just I just want to tell you that. I appreciate you. Uh, it's, it's nice to come to church and feel at home. And I do. Uh, and that's good. So. We love you, brother. Yeah, appreciate thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Brother Mark. Someone else? Anyone? Well, let's, uh, we're going to dismiss tonight. Uh, let's dismiss with an altar of prayer. We, there's lots of things that, some things you know about, some things you don't. And that's fine. Uh, uh, but the Lord knows all of it. And uh, uh, just pray for, I often say that, but you know, uh, I think it was Gary or uh, I can't remember Jeff. Somebody told me one time, you know, uh, uh, you know, I would. It, it's a joking way, but you know, they're they're glad that I come and preach, and I am too. Don't get me wrong. Don't don't misunderstand me. But uh, <laughs> as long as it ain't me, they said it was fine. I, that's the joke part of it. You understand what I'm talking about? The uh, and that's that's a blessing. I mean, I, y'all are a blessing to me, and I, I just want to tell you I love you. But I always pray for the people that are in charge, and it ain't me. Don't get it. Don't it, the deacons. That you know, how would you? I'll put it this way: How would you feel if you were the one that they asked to do whatever's going on at church? You'd have a lot of pressure on you. Uh, you, you would feel it, and uh, these men do, and women. There's some women, uh, teachers, uh, youth, and all things. And, and my point is, everybody needs prayer for God to hold them up, strengthen them, give them guidance, what they need to do, the choices they need to make. And I, I think the, that that's what I would ask you to pray for tonight. And I'm sure there's other things that we could pray about. But just pray for the church, the, the church and the people. Uh, love one another. Uh, and uh, uh, let the Lord just work in our lives and... Uh, and uh, wouldn't hurt, as Gary says, I think he's in a back, uh, to ask somebody to come to Sunday school yeah. in the church, right? Uh, it's not that hard. Uh, the wor- Look, it's the worst thing they can do is say no. That's it. And you ain't no worse off than where you were. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's the way it is. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, tonight, let's, uh, let's come to the altar of Miss Tammy and stand and play. And let's just... Uh, Dismissed tonight, we'll alter a prayer, okay?